Hey guys, how are y'all doing today? Sheila Texter with Sheila's One Stop Coaching Channel. If this is the first time you've ever been with me, I say welcome to you. If you are a subscriber and you are with me every Wednesday and Friday, welcome back. Today, though, we are going to be reading some more. I think it's in Chapter 2 of Life After the Mistake. But this is the channel, this is my channel, where every Wednesday and Friday I put out content, videos, where on Wednesdays I talk about my writing journey, I talk about, and I read out of this book I've started here a few weeks ago, to read my book through on Wednesdays on this channel. So if you don't want to purchase my book and you want to, and you want to read it, just follow me along. And I'll read it. And what I like about this that I've chosen to read this is that I can stop and I can kind of expound on it. Or when I get through reading a section, I can kind of talk about that section, elaborate on that section. But on Fridays, I do a content video, some kind of motivational, inspirational, transformational tip. Because I am a life coach. I'm a faith-based life coach. And my goal is to help every person to find that passion, to find their purpose, awaken those things, and then to take action. Because just to find out that you have a purpose or to find out that you would like to do something, that's just only the beginning. Then you've got to start taking steps, taking action to bring this thing to pass. Right, my writing journey started basically really back in 2018. I would say even as 2016 that different people would say, you know, you ought to write a book when I would share my story. And I said, well, you know, it's kind of a hard thing to write about. You know, nobody wants to uncover their sin and things. But you know what? I believe we're living in a day and a time that people need us to be real. They need us to be uh, authentic and real. They need us to um, be sincere. Because a lot of times what people see now, like, you know, they, they look at me as a, a, a giant in the Christian world. A lot of my friends have told me that. But they don't see the beforehand, but a lot of people have. And I've come a long way in God, and I'm not no no way saying that I have arrived and that I've got it all together. Because, honey, as long as we are in this flesh, we will battle with this flesh. And as long as we're still here on this earth, we will face problems, heartaches, problems, and trouble. But what I can tell you is that there is a peace in God that passeth all that passes all understanding. And I have found that peace. And there is a perfect peace. The Bible says that we could have perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee, which is stayed upon the word. And today I'm going to try not to keep you very long, but I am going to jump in here and read uh, in chapter 2 of Life After the Mistake. I wanted to tell y'all guys that I got on the my KDP account this morning, I've sold a couple more books and sold them um, in the ebooks. And also, see my book, since it's an ebook, it is available to the Kindle Unlimited. To anybody that has the Kindle Unlimited subscription through Amazon, they are able to download my book basically for free. They pay to download these books. And every page that they read or they click through, I get so much of it. I don't know how much, maybe two cents, three cents, four cents. I'm really not sure. I've not really dug down to just see what I'm getting. And and I didn't write these books to get, you know, to make all this money. But it's exciting to see other people purchasing my book, you know, getting that in them. Because I'm telling you, it is a beautiful, redemptive story. And also, I think last week I told y'all I was supposed to be meeting with the uh, people that have the Crucial Conversation podcast last week. I don't know what happened. We didn't get back in touch with one another. I think the storms and the rain kind of threw us off. I'm not really sure. I do know that I will eventually be on their podcast. 
I just don't know when. I don't, it's going to have to be a convenient time for us to come together, I'm sure, and have a recording and do a recording that they can put it on their podcast. I think they do, I think they do a weekly podcast. I'm not sure if it's weekly or every other week, but I am also a sponsor for them, and so they advertise my book and everything. So, but when they have me, we will be talking about my book. But also, I am writing B devotionals. I am still working on my first one. Hopefully, hopefully in another couple of weeks, it'll be ready to be purchased on the Amazon, on the KDP. Like I say, my proofreader, my editor, she's already got it formatted. She's got it in there. She's just proofreading it and editing it. And she's been on vacation. And that's okay. We both work at our convenient time. And that's what I like. So, but without further ado, we are going to read in this today. And I was reading in chapter 2, Good People Fall. I believe, oh, hold on, let me make sure that, yeah. I believe my experience in my first marriage had a lot to contribute to my actions after the divorce. In that marriage, I was a, I seem like I read this last week. Maybe I forgot to mark it. So where are you? Anyway, we'll go ahead and read it again because I cannot remember. I thought that I marked it. I believe my experience in my first marriage had a lot to contribute to my actions after the divorce. In that marriage, I was the victim of adulterous behavior. I was the wife that was neglected, abused, and betrayed. And my bitterness jaded my views of marriage. Perhaps it was difficult to weigh the consequences of destroying someone else's home against my own actions when it was finally my turn to make a choice. Even so, I know I was selfish in this act. I did read that. I'm pretty sure that I read that last week. So I'm just going to jump over here to go with me on my journey back to God back to my place yes my place not a building not a town but a place in my heart there were ghosts in my heart walls that had me hemmed in all I can say is that God never left me the life that I had settled into was my own it wasn't the life it wasn't the life that God had planned for me my actions led me off track and delayed my destiny but God allowed time for the dust to settle and then he was ready to bring things full circle I was still his child I was still his chosen one no one could do what he called me to do I will tell you that when God first started moving me back to my place it didn't seem like the great big adventure that it is now Going back home, especially after being gone for a long period of time, can often be daunting. People at home can remain guarded when you leave because of some foolish mistake or wrong decision you made. I'm, I'm pretty sure I read this last week, but I'm just going to go on with it. In counseling sessions, the pastor, the therapist, the counselor may suggest you return home. Home can be a different place for all of us. Some will have to go back to their hometown, others to their families, and perhaps some even must return to the church. You cannot heal if you do not face the skeleton that hangs in your heart's closet. Taking those first steps can be very hard not knowing what lies ahead. Fear, shame, guilt, and regret will absolutely overwhelm your mind. You have to know that sometimes it's not just you who needs to face those ghosts of the past from my experience there may even be several there may be several people that will need this as well as you and though you're not responsible for what they choose to do your bravery could lead them to freedom as well i'm going to continue reading because i don't got that i don't know if you can see but that light. I ain't got but one more page in this chapter, so I'm going to go and read it so that way next week when we start, we can start, man. Chapter 3, 
It's, it's going to be good. We need to forgive. We need to forgive. They need to forgive. We often just want to make sense of it all. We are talking about failing God and people. This book is centered around affairs, adultery, and infidelity. But any failure or mistake can have people pushed up in a corner, making it hard to cope with life. That's why we have to deal with the failures. It could simply be a sincere apology asking for forgiveness. This may take several times in doing something to truly let them know that you are sincere. Don't beat yourself up. Do what you feel like God wants you to do. Be sure and pray much about all involved. Then leave the rest to God. Can I tell you that God is for you? He wants to set you free. You are loved and forgiven. He longs to fellowship with you. He misses you. Some of you may be attending churches, even singing on the praise team, participating in the services. Taking action to do the right thing is important and noteworthy, but you're just going through the motions. How do you move past just going through the motions? You truly love the Lord. Your actions are sincere. Only you know the battles that your mind puts you through. I can relate. I am an overcomer as well. Don't settle for your routine commitments. Thank God for them, but don't settle for the mundane when you can live one of the most fulfilling lives you've ever lived. Man can't stop you, maybe hinder you, but never stop you. Now, if I did read that last week, I do apologize. I will be better. I will do better on that. I will do better. Now, the end of this, you know, like I said, at the end of everything, uh, chapter, some, some of the pages ended up blank, and so we would put a quote there. Now, I had to be careful because of copyrights, but what I did is I like to, I like to say in Humpty Dumpty, you know, Humpty Dumpty uh, had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall. You know, he fell, but I, there was one saying, but I had to be careful with the copyright. So I just kind of made this up, kind of made this up with the Humpty Dumpty saying. says, there is a little Humpty Dumpty in us all. We are humans. In other words, we fall. Sometimes we fall. Sometimes it's our own doings. Sometimes it's somebody else's. You know, but we still fall. So I'm excited. I'm going to mark this now that we will be starting this next week. Uh, let's see, this is, and guys, September is almost over. So we will be reading this next week, and I want to think it's the 7th. But anyway, we will start a new chapter, chapter 3, Broken Beginnings. This is the part where we get to start reading about the story. I get to start sharing Shelly's Shelley's journey to her failure. And uh, you're going to really like it. But the name of that chapter is Broken Beginnings. So I'm excited about that. But I'm going to get off here for today. It's a little short today, but that's okay. Got a lot going on. But just, I appreciate y'all. If you have subscribed, I appreciate it. I appreciate you following along and with me in the book as I read the book. But coming Friday, I've started this new thing on Fridays as well that I'm reading two out of my Be Devotional book because it's like a, it's kind of like a transformational thing. I'll read a scripture, I'll read a, uh, an, a reflection or an insight with it, I'll pray, and then i give you like a call to action. And so again, they're going to be available and I'm hoping within a couple of years, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm making sure that I give myself that time frame. But hopefully by June, my plan is by June of 2022, I'm hoping that I have all 12 of these devotionals ready. And I hope before then, but at least by then, I want to have 12 of them. 
<clears throat> but you know, life happens, things happen. I'm doing virtual schooling right now with my grandson. I am also in a computer college class right now. I'm only taking one class right now, and I'm glad that's all they gave me, especially with all the other stuff that's going on. So guys, but also, um, if you watch me today and you want a book, I'm going to be in Osceola, Arkansas at the pop-up event thing where vendors are coming with their product. I'm going to be there, Lord's willing, from 11 to 2. And then I'm going to Tennessee. Uh, I'm pointing that way because that's the way we're going to Dyersburg. It's on the other side of Dyersburg, about an hour from Blyville, Arkansas, to a thing called Jesus Rally. Uh, now, I won't be having no books or nothing there. I'm just going to... Uh, I've been invited to come and just enjoy, you know, the preaching, singing, what have you. So I'm going to be there, Lord's willing, this coming Saturday evening. So, guys, y'all have a great day. Have a great week. Stay strong. I'm not even going to get on the politics, but God knows that we need him. We need him in our country. Our country is a mess. It's chaotic. But God ain't, God ain't messed up. God is on his throne. And God is still God. And if we are where we need to be with him, we will not get sucked up into the chaos, into the confusion or the fear. We will know. We will know where we stand with God. Maybe not in the world, but we know where we stand with God. And that's the most important thing. So guys, again, every Wednesday I wear my Life After the Mistake t-shirt that my friend made me. And I just want to say y'all have a great day and I appreciate y'all coming in. And I will be back Friday.